The Evil Within is the latest entry in the survival horror genre by acclaimed game director Shinji Mikami. And with games like Resident Evil 1, Dino Crisis, and Resident Evil 4 under his belt, could this game be the next in his stellar lineup? We will see. Ah. Smells like blood. In The Evil Within, you take control of veteran police detective Sebastian Castellanos, a hard-nosed detective that has a bit of a drinking problem. Joined by fellow detectives Julie Kidman and Joseph Oda, you are sent to investigate a mass murder at Beacon Mental Hospital. The Evil Within looks good, not great by any stretch of the imagination. As a game that is available on current and last-gen consoles, it appears that graphical parity was more important than pushing the envelope in this department. The character models are rough, to say the least, and the lack of emotion during cutscenes took me out of the experience. The frame rate suffers as well, with many moments during action scenes and outdoor scenes stuttering, but the game for the most part runs at 30 frames per second. The game is also presented in letterbox ratio with no way to change it, at least on home consoles. The Evil Within shines in the sound department. From the eerie groans of the undead to the sounds of the rounds you fire into them, this game sounds great. Voice acting is also done very well, with talented voice work and well-known actors like Jennifer Carpenter. If you like the Resident Evil series, you will love this atmospheric soundtrack. It keeps you in a constant state of panic, and overall really added to the many creepy moments that I had. As I don't like to spoil games, I will just say this, that The Evil Within has an incredibly convoluted story and with many twists and turns. For the most part, I didn't really care for the story as it was distributed in a method that really took me out of the experience, like manuals that you must read and audio recordings that you play if you're lucky enough to find them. There is little to no character development and for the most part, I didn't care at all about the characters in the game. From Sebastian to Julie, Joe, or the mental patient that the game tries to make a major character, Leslie, I didn't care if they lived or died. He survived being linked to Ruvik, the only patient ever as far as I know. The main villain is Ruvik, a mysterious man who seems to be able to kill with his thoughts alone, and like every other character in the game, I didn't care about his plight either. There's also a nurse that is in the ether that allows you to upgrade weapons and save your game. You should find this useful. And while there was much that the writers could have done to make this character worthwhile, it seems that they dropped the ball again. As much as I wanted to know who she was or why she was helping me, I never got a satisfying answer. If you like Resident Evil 6's controls, then you will be comfortable with the evil within. While these controls do feel dated, they are also sufficient for this experience. While I found many frustrating situations where I was unable to pick up items that I was not looking directly at, there was also a few times that I would aim at an enemy, pull my trigger and the bullet would be way off the mark, and situations like that will take you out of the experience. Melee attacks are also extremely weak, and even fully upgraded it felt like I was wasting my time.
sprinting is also a waste of time as you must fully upgrade it to feel like you can adequately escape mobs of enemies. The bow gun on the other hand is an extremely powerful weapon with its abilities to shoot explosive, ice, shock, and harpoon darts. This is my favorite weapon in the game. If you like survival horror games, then I must say that even with its flaws, The Evil Within delivers a truly creepy and fun gameplay experience. With its foreboding atmosphere and its creepy bosses and sound that keeps you afraid of what lies in the darkness, I am giving The Evil Within a 7 out of 10. Thanks for watching, guys. Please show some support and hit that thumbs up button. It really means a lot. And if you're new to the Beastly Gamer channel, consider subscribing. I'm the Beastly Gamer. And I'll see you guys next time.